Experience Shots history is to secure the number one seed in the AFC. Ravens are down 6 nothing early, and then Lamar finds Mark Andrews, 39-yard touchdown. Ravens take a 7-6 advantage, and then all of a sudden, Tim, very quickly, they get the ball right back. It was crazy. It was like uh, the last five minutes or four minutes of this half were nuts, and then this play right Come here speaks Come to on. the brilliance of Lamar Jackson. Free runner, zero coverage, still able to get the ball off. It's incredible. Jackson had three touchdown passes in this game, his eighth game this season with three passing touchdowns. Go to the fourth quarter now. Eight minutes to go. Browns are down 24-9. First and goal. Baker Mayfield to Odell Beckham Jr. How about that catch and throw in the corner? They went for two. They didn't get it. And then OBJ and Freddie Kitchens are having a conversation. We don't know what was being said, so we don't know if he's mad at Freddie or somebody else. Nonetheless. Ravens trying to put it away. Mark Ingram had left this game with an injury more on that in a moment, but they still have the best running game in all of football. Justice Hill, 18 yards there, and the Ravens clinched the number one seed in the AFC with a 31-15 win to get them to 13-2 on the season. You see the numbers there from Lamar Jackson. 20 for 31, 238 yards with three scores I mentioned. Oh, yeah, he also ran for 103 yards, six career game with 100 Rushing yards, and by the way, 36 passing touchdowns this season. That breaks Vinny Testaverde's single-season franchise record. What else can you say about this Raven squad? 13 to two. 13 to two. That's dope. Um, we, we got a great group of guys. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm happy right now. I'm startled. Uh, we're gonna celebrate on the plane probably, but I'm, I'm just happy. I'm, we got a great ride going on right now. Um, we just got to keep it going, you know. Um, we want to get to the Super Bowl. This is not a Super Bowl game. How many interceptions did he have for the season? Six. six. Thirty-six to six. Whoa. Man, what more can be? What more do you need to say? It's just—it's amazing. It's Not tremendous. It's one of the best. Uh, yeah. Should I say it? Go ahead. Go ahead. Huh? Marshall. <laughs> it's not bad for a running back. <laughs> We good? That's a drop to Mike. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so again, Baltimore clinches the top seed in the AFC for first time in franchise history. Those 13 wins this season tied for their most in a season since 2006. However, that team would go on to lose in the divisional round. NFL playoff predictor gives the Ravens the best chance of winning the Super Bowl right now, 34%, which is twice as much as the Patriots. Josina Anderson joins us now here on SportsCenter. All right, Josina, a huge moment for this organization, but also for this team going forward in terms of trying to win that Super Bowl, but it may have come at a cost. What more can you tell us about that? Well, you're right, Michael. It was a big game for the Ravens getting that one seed and clinching the bye. But uh, obviously, they did suffer somewhat of a cost with running back Mark Ingram suffering a calf injury. And after the game, I spoke to him at his locker and he told me, yes, I'm feeling some pain. He was able to walk uh, throughout the locker room a little bit, but he did tell me he plans on getting an MRI. And after locker room was done, he actually walked by me in the hallway. And I saw that he had a walking boot on his left foot. I asked him, why is it necessary to have on your foot? And he said, it's going to kind of help prevent me from pushing up on my toe and putting pressure on the calf. Ingram also telling me either way, I do not plan on forcing it next week. After the game, I did at least catch up with Earl Thomas, who was able to put the celebration into words for the rest of the team. First of all, it's not about me. It's about the guys that's been doing this the whole season. we got an MVP quarterback in Lamar Jackson, and he's, he's, he's steady surprising everybody on the sideline. There's nobody better than him. Our defense is playing really good. Our O-line is giving Lamar time. Mark and the running backs, they're doing really good. It's a total team effort. The receivers making big plays. Linebackers, we should have had two picks on defense. Uh, it's a total team effort again. I saw you guys praying before the game. So many things. You got your teammate come up. Oh, OBJ, no giving teammate, you man. love. <laughs> OBJ, giving you hey, love. Hey, we got Trey Cleach. OBJ giving you love after the game. Talk about put into words the spirit of this team that you're feeling that feels really special. Yeah, it's, it's, we, we uh, united together as straight unity. Uh, from the coaches to the players, it's been fun coming to work, and uh, we've been putting it out there every week. Now, you've obviously been to a couple Super Bowls before. Do you feel like this team has that makeup, you know, to do that type of special thing here uh, this uh, postseason? Yeah, we have a, a great quarterback, just like we had when we played in Seattle. We have a great defense on all, all phases, front, middle, and the back end. We got all the pieces to do it, whatever we want. All right, any guarantees you want to deliver? No guarantees, but we're going to keep playing like this. All right, I appreciate your time. All right, thank you. 
Well, Earl Thomas didn't want to give a guarantee there, but he just texted me before this live shot and tell me he's not planning to play against the Steelers in week 17. So, Michael, it'll be interesting to see what John Harbaugh decides in terms of getting extra reps, insurance time to some of his backups as they kind of migrate through the rest of the playoffs. And obviously, lastly, disappointing uh, locker room for the Browns. Afterwards, I spoke to Browns defensive back Demaris Randall, who said it was very tough to see that the Titans and also the Steelers did lose. They just didn't take care of business. Watching the Ravens score three touchdowns towards the end of the first half and coming out of the break, just not taking care of business today, Michael. Yeah, a couple of storylines there in play, but the one that everyone's going to remember going forward. First seed hopes alive, and also Jeremy Fowler with the Jets did a little damage to the Pittsburgh Steelers playoff hopes. So with that, we say welcome to another edition of Sports Center. Zuba Mahinti. This is, of course, Tim Hausback. I'm Michael Lee. Jeff Saturday will join us a little bit later. But as we saw yesterday with the three games we had on Saturday, so many implications on the line, and that was the same case today as well, Zuba. No question for New Orleans and Tennessee with a little history mixed in. Tim, let's get you set to go. The former QB waxing poetic under the game's best wide receiver. More on that in a second. Michael said it. Saints, Titans, plenty on the line. Alvin Kamara hasn't had the season many thought, Tim, but he busted out today. He did. He had a good day, and it really started in the second half here with the guys up front untouched. Really no excuse by the Titans. 80 on the ground, a couple touches. Saints pushed the lead to double digits. Later in the third, Tannehill coming to life to Sharp. We got ourselves a ball game. Three-point game after... That scramble and looking for room. It's an outstanding play by Ryan Tannehill. It's basically backyard football. Buys a little time, sharp, adjust form, and finds Pater. Fourth quarter, here's where we mentioned history. Drew Brees to Michael Thomas, and this is going to set the record for the most receptions in a single season in league history. Tim, what is there to say about that one? I mean, just look at the 144 catches. And then the route he ran to get open for that was just filthy, so fitting. Yeah, stop just short there. Saints would end up cashing it in later in the drive. They win 38-28. Smiles all abound. A dozen catches. Buck 36. 144 at that mark when he set the mark, as Tim said. What else is there to say? Sean Payton and company knew they'd have to pay Michael Thomas a ton of money. They did. And the Saints and Sean Payton are winners again. They're 12th of the season. It's good to get a win. Uh, be it we started off slow. We struggled in a lot of areas to start the game, and uh, it was frustrating. I thought defensively after those two touchdown drives, I thought you know, we really uh, did a few things to get that momentum shifted, and then special teams gave us some great returns today, and then offensively we finally got going. And so now the first seed hopes alive, and also Jeremy Fowler with the Jets did a little damage to the Pittsburgh Steelers playoff hopes. So with that, we say welcome to another edition of Sports Center. Zuba Mahinti. This is, of course, Tim Hausback. I'm Michael Lee. Jeff Saturday will join us a little bit later. But as we saw yesterday with the three games we had on Saturday, so many implications on the line, and that was the same case today as well, Zuba. No question for New Orleans and Tennessee with a little history mixed in. Tim, let's get you set to go. The former QB waxing poetic under the game's best wide receiver. More on that in a second. Michael said it. Saints, Titans, plenty on the line. Alvin Kamara hasn't had the season many thought, Tim, but he busted out today. He did. He had a good day, and it really started in the second half here with the guys up front untouched. Really no excuse by the Titans. 80 on the ground, a couple touches. Saints pushed the lead to double digits. Later in the third, Tannehill coming to life to Sharp. We got ourselves a ball game. Three-point game after... That scramble and looking for room. It's an outstanding play by Ryan Tannehill. It's basically backyard football. Buys a little time, sharp, adjusts form, and finds Pater. Fourth quarter, here's where we mentioned history. Drew Brees to Michael Thomas, and this is going to set the record for the most receptions in a single season in league history. Tim, what is there to say about that one? I mean, just look at the 144 catches. And then the route he ran to get open for that was just filthy, so fitting. Yeah, stop just short there. Saints would end up cashing it in later in the drive. They win 38-28. Smiles all abound. A dozen catches. Buck 36. 144 at that mark when he set the mark. As Tim said, what else is there to say? Sean Payton and company knew they'd have to pay Michael Thomas a ton of money. They did. And the Saints and Sean Payton are winners again. They're 12th of the season. It's good to get a win. Uh, be it we started off slow. We struggled in a lot of areas to start the game, and uh, it was frustrating. I thought defensively after those two 
touchdown drives. I thought you know, we really uh, did a few things to get that momentum shifted. 